Good morning, folks. TGF, it's a Friday. This is Squawk Box, and I'm Martin Sung down here at the DBS Asian Insights Conference in Singapore at the Marina Bay Sands a Convention Center. And uh, this is their once-a-year marquee event, which brings together analysts, experts, also investors, to talk about the big trends, the big ideas that are going to shape the Asia of tomorrow and potentially how you can make some pretty good money out of this. Uh, we're going to be a little later on uh, on a panel a discussion talking about digital disruption, the Ubers of the world, who are the new Ubers of the world, etc. The challenges that they face from the existing establishment, also from governments, from regulations, etc. And we're going to be talking to a whole bunch of very interesting guests including a gentleman who is disrupting the P2P lending space in China, having already done so in the U.S., uh, plus somebody who's starting a website for property hunters. If you're looking for a house or a flat or a condo or a mansion, this is apparently the place to go, and it's incredibly different from what's on offer right now. So th there's a lot coming up. But right now, though, let's bring in uh, Piyush Gupta. He's the DB uh, CEO of DBS. He joins me here live. Piyush, great to see you. Good morning, and Good appreciate your time Mark. very much. I'm so glad you're here at the DBS Asian oh, Insight it, Conference. It's always our pleasure to be here. So first off, before we get to the conference and digital disruption and all these big ideas, I want to get your take about uh, on what's been going on the last three weeks in China, the stock market route. It's what everybody is watching, what everybody is talking about. Yesterday we had markets uh, rebound 6% or so. Do you think this is the bottom? Do you have any sort of sense? kind of hard to say because uh, markets tend to be volatile and uh, a degree of panic has set in over the last couple of weeks. Okay. So it could go either way. Uh, it's quite clear the Chinese are throwing everything, including the kitchen sink, yeah. at the problem. And so I think there's a good likelihood that they can establish a floor, but there is no certainty to the problem. Does it make you uncomfortable the way the Chinese authorities are intervening? I mean, this is the government of uh, uh, this is an, uh, the new government, which has been on record saying, that, look, we want market forces to play a much greater role. We want to see price discovery. We, we want this to be much less sort of top-down command-led as it has been for, for a long time. Yet, everything they've been doing the last three weeks, almost on a daily basis, all the moves to try and show up the market have been going against that. Look, uh, the Chinese have a clear agenda of liberalizing the system, both uh, the ability to price uh, and the flow of capital. But these are not easy processes. They come from a centrally administered economy. And to expect that to change uh, overnight uh, is uh, uh, not realistic. And which is why they've been uh, measured and tempered. They've set up a game plan. They're actually proceeding with this much quicker than people expected. Uh, but nevertheless, they have a measured pace of doing that. Mm -hmm. Now, in the process, uh, I think you will see uh, these bouts of uncertainty. Uh, because they don't quite know how to run with the new rules of the game. Has it affected the government's credibility, do you think? Uh, some. Some. I think the bigger issue is, uh, uh, does it actually get them to dial back the pace of liberalization? Uh, I was in Shanghai at the Liu Zhejiao Forum a couple of weeks ago. Ah, yes. mm -hmm. And I suggested, in fact, I thought that they would liberalize much faster than people expected. Uh, I thought there would be substantial capital account convertibility in 6 to 12 months. Uh, which is what Governor Joe said in April in IMF. So, this market route, does that put things back? It might. It and might. to me, the concern is they might figure 6 to 12 months too uh, quick, but does it fundamentally change the agenda? I don't think. So, it might take them 6 to 12 months more than I originally anticipated. Okay, what, what that, is, that is my only concern. Do oh, they tweak back? Okay, what do you think of uh, the school of thought that thinks that, look, this kind of market route is the perfect opportunity for China to accelerate or step up liberalization, opening up of the capital account, and allow foreign money, more foreign money to come in and faster to help put a bottom under this market. Does that make sense to you? It, it smells opportunity for, to, uh, smells like opportunity to a lot of foreign investors. Uh, frankly, uh, I don't think a lot of money will rush into China, no matter what they said Watch right so. now. You think about the quotas. They have quotas with caps, which are only 50% used up. And that tells you there's not a huge amount of money rushing in at this point in time. The possibility and prospect of a Fed liftoff and the fact that global capital flows are currently being balanced, money is leaving the region, uh, that impacts the appetite to put money into China. You take the Stock Connect mm. and you look at the northbound flows in the Stock Connect, they've not been that strong even prior to the three-week route. Okay. Uh, that's one. So I don't think it will happen. But second, I do think it's appropriate when you are trying to tweak and guide an $11 trillion economy to be a little thoughtful, to learn from the lessons 
adjust and tweak for them mm -hmm. uh, instead of running uh, Hilta Skelta in. So learn from the lessons of, let's say, the West. 2008, we had the Fed, big bazooka doing whatever it takes. 2012, we had the ECB and Mario Draghi, we will do whatever it takes. There's been a lot of chatter in the markets the last 48 hours or so that China is on the cusp of doing something very similar, meaning bringing all the resources of the state and the money of the state to bear to be the buyer of last resort and outsized policy action, their version of a big bazooka. Are you expecting that? Is that what it's going to take to, to put a bottom under these markets and get them back yeah, up? Look at 2008. How much money did they use? And look at 2012. How much money did Draghi use? So these are not issues of how much resources you put, but issues of confidence. How do you put a confidence floor under the market? And how do you therefore stem that panic? Okay. And therefore to use any tools you can to build confidence back into the market, I think that's uh, legit and likely to happen. All right. Uh, the market route has, has that affected your business in China at all? Not really. Uh, we don't have uh, margin financing, which could be impacted by some of the stuff. There could be second order impacts, but all of Defaults? the... Uh, this, those are second order impacts, but all of the reviews we are doing on our portfolio doesn't suggest any damage. Okay, Piyush, very quickly, only just a couple of minutes left. This conference, one big theme is going to be digital disruption. You're a, a big sort of digital warrior for uh, the bank, and you've been quoted saying that in five years you want DBS to be an invisible bank. So this may be a strange question, but describe, if you could, not so much what an invisible bank looks like in five years, if that's what DBS is to become, but what it's going to feel like, especially for, for customers and users. Well, I, I said banks will be invisible, I'm not sure five years, but I'll tell you what it feels like. Uh, Bill Gates was fa famously quoted as saying, uh, people in the future need banking, but they don't need banks. And so the idea is that what you do with your life uh, is what your principal job is. The banking service is an adjunct to your principal job. You want to go and eat a meal. The fact that you need a credit card to pay is incidental. You want to go buy a house for your family. The fact that you need a mortgage loan is incidental. And therefore, banks have got to think about what is the real job to be done and then integrate into your real job and not make banking an independent uh, uh, misaligned activity. That's what the concept of an in invisible bank is. But bricks and mortar, actual buildings where banks have offices will still be needed, of course. There will be, but shrinking. If yeah. you look at the footfall into bank branches, frankly, look at even the calls into call centers coming down in absolute terms. So around the world, bank branches are reducing. So you'll have fewer branches, you will have show centers, uh, you will have branches that form, uh, play a different purpose, uh, so they will be around. But fundamentally, the transacting business of banks is going to be embedded and integrated into the real uh, work that companies and consumers need to do. Wow, and we can look forward to that. Excellent. Fascinating. Uh, Piyush, thank you for talking to us. Not at all. Appreciate your time. Again, thank and, you for being uh, congratulations here. on your conference again. Thanks so much indeed. Okay. All right, Susan, we've been talking to Piyush Gupta, the CEO at DBS, and there you go. That's what banking is going to feel like perhaps as soon as five years' time. Now, the fascinating interview, and I love that quote that Piyush brought up from Steve Jobs. The world needs banking, but not necessarily banks in the future. Okay, Marty, good stuff. Good talking to you. Martin Sung there with an exclusive with DBS's CEO, Piyush Gupta. Now, coming up, nothing to see here. Are we staying with the invisibility theme? I guess we are. Malaysia's interim reports on the 1MDB allegations are out. We'll take a closer look at the details. That comes your way next.